Thank you very much. I am uh, absolutely delighted to be here today and it's fitting that we're in Bendigo to talk about innovation. Bendigo being the place where the Chico Roll was born, where uh, the harvester was, was invented uh, and where Maya was first founded and of course uh, the great icon of Bendigo, the Bendigo Bank, which uh, with my background in banking is an absolute model of uh, different thinking when it comes to the banking. Bringing that community aspect into their banking model has been absolutely fantastic for so many communities who have enjoyed uh, the benefits of that model through the distribution of hundreds of thousands of dollars into their communities. And I also want to say that the Bendigo Bank has been fantastic in mentoring young people and helping them achieve the best that they can achieve. And that dovetails nicely into what I wanted to talk about today, which was the idea of supporting young people uh, and investing in them as entrepreneurs and innovators and clear thinkers for the future. Uh, young people are a very important demographic of Victoria. Uh, they make up almost 20% of Victoria's population and, uh, and that, that accounts to just over a million people of, of young people aged between 12 and 25. 30% of those people live in rural and regional Victoria and one of the aspirations of, that I have as Youth Affairs Minister is make, to make sure that those young people in rural and regional Victoria are as connected to their communities as possible. Uh, we want to have them uh, stay in the communities to add to the community and be part of those communities as time goes on. When I became Youth Affairs Minister, one of the things I wanted to do was change the way people looked at young people. Um, often we see uh, the newspapers or, or different uh, enclaves of society talk about young people uh, in a negative way or talk about them in a stereotypical way, um, talk about them as liabilities. I instead wanted people to see them as assets in our community. I think that's very important. We wanted to have uh, people see them as not as problems in our community, but as problem solvers. Uh, much of the uh, welfare sector refers to young people as uh, clients, but I also I believe that they should be seen as change makers. And of course, in a very positive way, people often refer to young people as our leaders of tomorrow. Well, I tell you what, I don't reckon that young people are ready to wait for tomorrow. I think we have innovators, change makers and decision makers who are ready to lead today. And I think that they, we should be supporting them to the best of our ability to let them lead today. When I uh, became Youth Affairs Minister, I wanted to put some framework around how I approach young people. I wanted to put a, uh, an aspirational document together to say where I saw young people going as time went on. Uh, the youth statement that I put out about two and a half years ago uh, has three central themes. They are engage, involve, create. We as a government want to see young people engaged in training, education or in employment. We want to see them very much involved in the decision makers in their community. And we want to help them create their own culture and create enterprise. And it's to that last point that uh, the statement up there that all Victorians enjoy healthy, active and fulfilling lives and have the opportunity to achieve their full potential. It's that aspect that I want to talk about more fully today. In trying to understand how we could make young people achieve uh, their full potential, uh, I thought what was the best way to do that? And, and we came up with a great strategy called the Enterprise Strategy for Young Victorians. This enterprise strategy is the first of its kind in any jurisdiction in Australia. It is a, a, a strategy that is targeted at helping young people reach their full potential and understand the, uh, the possibilities that are before them. It supports innovators and it supports uh, creative thinking and people, young people who we help create their own business opportunities and their own enterprise will of course be a great contributor to the Victorian uh, economy as time goes on and of course will be people who end up employing more young people and more Victorians uh, throughout, uh, throughout their lives and throughout their professional lives. If we can support young people through this strategy, we can have the opportunity to have their thinking around today's problems because young people think differently, more innovatively and they think outside the box. They're also much more nimble than many of us, uh, uh, us older people like myself, at, around the new technologies that we're seeing in society today. So they have a lot to offer and I really do believe that if we just imagine for a moment, if we open the doors to these young people of what they can achieve, can Bendigo be the new Silicon Valley? Can it be the doorway to new ideas, new technologies and new thinking? Can the person, any student at this school be the person who next invents the uh, new internet uh, search engines like Google or new apps or new social media like Facebook? And can the person sitting next to you today be the next Richard Branson? a person who sees new products, new opportunities and new ways of marketing them. Well, of course, I believe that that's true in every sense that can be possible. 
Enterprises that are run by people under 30 years old survive longer than uh, other enterprises that are run by people old, older than that. Um, we have an average growth rate of two, over 200% from young people, which compares extremely favourably to, uh, to enterprises that are run by people uh, uh, who have been in, perhaps in business longer. So I, we know that young people are a rich resource and we want, need to make sure that we're able to support them as much as we can. So I want to talk about the two aspects of our uh, um, enterprise strategy for young people. The first is uh, New Gen, which is about a social enterprise. We know young people want to get involved in their communities. We, want to, we know that young people want to make their communities a better place, whether that community is a city like Bendigo, a state like Victoria, a country like Australia, or something even more broadly than that. Social enterprise is about developing a business model while, getting, while addressing a social need. And the Victorian government partnered with an organisation called Social Traders, who uh, want to, or an organisation that want to use the market to deliver sustainable social outcomes. This part of the strategy that we have is about uh, talking to young people about social enterprise ideas that they have and helping them develop that into a sustainable business. And also taking young people who have started a social enterprise and helping them expand it, or as I say, make sure, making sure that it can be viable into the future. So putting a structured business model around these social enterprises so that they can still achieve the great uh, social outcomes that they're looking to achieve, but also make sure that they will self-fund into the future. A great example of social enterprise is um, from a young man named Daniel Flynn. Uh, for those that don't know that name, um, Daniel saw that there was uh, a, a great problem in underdeveloped countries around getting clean water as well as other uh, uh, challenges that those underdeveloped communities have. And he uh, brought out a product called Thank You Water, which is now sold in both major supermarkets of uh, Coles and Woolworths. And the profits of that, of that, the sale of that water goes back to these underdeveloped countries. And I think that that's, he is an outstanding young man. He's um, branching out into food now. He's done a fantastic job at marketing his product. And it's that sort of person, that sort of opportunity that we want to help nurture as much as we can. Uh, the other aspect of this particular strategy is called getting down to business. And this, this stream is about helping young people uh, uh, set up their uh, new startups. It's, it's about bringing together a group of young people, um, 160 in all we'll see over the next four years. The first tranche has come through now, only 41 people. But these are people who have great ideas about starting up a business or again who have an established business that's going, who want to expand it and do more with it into the future. This isn't like going to school and it's not about doing an online course. Each participant in this, uh, in this stream will have a, a uh, tailored strategy put around what they're trying to achieve. They'll have their own mentor, they'll have an opportunity to have someone sit down with them and work through the various aspects to make sure that their business is viable in the future and can be grown. Um, there are mentoring opportunities there. Uh, participants will, will uh, be part of round tables, will be a part of one-on-one -on -one conversations with their mentors. They'll be taught uh, financial uh, aspects around business development. Uh, they'll be introduced to people who will help them develop their business into the future. And I just want to go through just uh, half a dozen people who are involved in this particular, uh, particular program, just to show you the, that, that there are real people with real goals and aspirations that this particular program is helping. Uh, Rachel here is from uh, Victoria's West. She recently purchased some land from her father, who is a farmer out there, to raise uh, beef cattle. She's got a fantastic dream of becoming uh, someone who can take this great product, this great Victorian uh, food product, from paddock to plate. Now, just earlier this year, we had 250 inbound uh, trade mission participants from right around the country where we launched our Food to Asia campaign. That campaign is something that we're marketing out there so, so that uh, people right around the world can, can get our very high quality and very well-respected food into the markets offshore. And I can imagine, certainly, that Rachel will be part of that into the future. Uh, the next guy we've got here is a young man named Andrew. Now, Andrew is not about making a lot of money for himself. What he wants to do is help people like him. He wants to connect young people with mentors and opportunities uh, so that they can have a fulfilling and sustained employment into the future. His goal is to make sure that he can uh, bring together the people that need to be brought together so that they can get that really professional development. And he's doing an amazing job and has great plans for that particular, uh, that particular career. Amy is a hairdresser. She wants to launch a whole range of salons and hairdressers right across uh, the state and beyond, I think, if she had her way. 
Um, she is a great example of someone who is using her own skills to create her own employment. And I think that that should be nurtured, absolutely. Someone who's prepared to, uh, to find her own way, to put her own business forward. Um, she currently has a business model, but with this one-on-one -on -one mentoring over the next few years, she will be able to expand that business more fully than it is now. So she's also doing some amazing work. Uh, this guy, Stephen, jumped out at me. He's a, a carpenter down in Ballarat. Um, he jumped out at me because in my own area, out in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, uh, I met a man, uh, a guy who was a president of a local footy club who uh, started as a carpenter when he was in his 20s, uh, went into property development and now is a multi-millionaire. And I think that uh, Stephen's path is laid out for him by emulating the work that has been done already by this, uh, by this gentleman that I know. Uh, Katharina is also amazing, 16 years old boy. She's a great example of why age is no barrier to a great idea. She's already taken on uh, aspects of social media that, that maybe established businesses haven't got a hold of. She's marketing the uh, benefits of Instagram to established businesses to help them market their idea more fully. Many of these small businesses that she's talking to simply don't have the opportunity to learn how social media can help, uh, and she is certainly helping them to progress those business ideas. She's already um, published a book that's available on, on Amazon. Um, I jumped on Am Amazon last night, and there's uh, five-star reviews that give her, would give her great comfort that uh, the, the, the book that she's put out is simple, uh, easy to understand, and of great value to those who have already read it. So she's doing amazingly. And Bella, finally, is um, interested in producing movies. Um, the one thing that makes, me, that makes her stand out to me is, of course, that last line from her, I intend to create hundreds of jobs for Australians. And what a goal for a 22-year-old to have. It's one thing to say you want to make movies, but if one of your aspirations is to provide opportunities for people like yourself um, and to talk about hundreds of Australians getting jobs through her future business, well, I think that that's the sort of thing that has to be implauded. This uh, Bankwest data that we recently got hold of it shows us uh, exactly why we should be supporting these young people. We've had a growth in workers uh, in their own businesses aged 25 to 34, a growth of 8.5% over the past year alone. So that's over 15,000 businesses that young people are running, a great addition to the Victorian economy, a great employer for Victorians and every reason why we should be supporting them as much as we possibly can. So. In short, I think that we clearly need to invest and support these young people. Now, the ideas that I had around this uh, turned into a very strong and innovative policy to get the ball rolling. We're going to be putting 40 people through our getting down to business camp uh, strategy this year. But what we need to do is to have community and business get on board as well. We need to have the whole community and business uh, offer opportunities to young people. And I talked about Bendigo Bank at the outset. Benigo Bank are fantastic at providing those opportunities for young people, but more businesses need to get on board and more members of our community need to understand that these young people need to be nurtured and provided those opportunities as much as possible. Because we do need to build a generation of fearless young people who with confidence and opportunity will absolutely have the guts to give it a, a, a fair dink and go. So I'll just leave you with this. Young people will, and in fact they certainly are, going to be a major contributor to the prosperity of this state going forward. And all of us need to support them to make sure that they can realise their unlimited potential. Thank you for your time. <laughs>